Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a weekly reading wrap up. I read three books this week and they are quite a mixed bag. Sometimes you have a week where you really have to force yourself to finish the book and I had one of those weeks uh, this week where two books were just a little bit of a drag, very interesting premise, but didn't quite meet my expectations, and then one which I didn't know anything about going into and I really enjoyed. The first book I read this week is called Better to Have Gone, Love, Death, and the Quest for Utopia in Oroville by Akash Kapoor, and this is a nonfiction book about a planned community in India. The book is retracing the steps and trying to uncover what happened to the author's wife's parents. Um, the author, as well as his wife, were born in Oroville, they grew up there. Ankush's wife, Oralise, her parents were two of the very first people in Oroville. Oroville was, as I said, a planned community, a sort of utopia. Um, some people considered it a cult. They lived with the idea that uh, general society, different civilizations had become consumed by the desire for um, consumption, of uh, the desire of The book focuses on Oralise's parents, John and Diane. This was in the 60s and they bought some land in southern India and started a movement, a lifestyle. Um, there's some religious or spiritual aspects involved with a woman called the mother whom they believed was going to be able to reach a higher spiritual form. I like reading about alternative living and the pros and cons of trying to create new societies. However, the writing style was very, very slow going. Um, the author also bounced around a lot where it wasn't really clear if he wanted to talk about his own life in the current day or if he was trying to tie it back to John and Diane. Um, why exactly he was sharing certain details and neglecting to share others. It was really interesting to read about the issues that the community faced, which things from the world that they were accepting of, um, and which things they weren't. There was a point where the mother had decided that their community should not use any money, um, but of course that was very problematic when they needed to build houses or to buy food or to communicate with the world outside of Oroville, which of course uses money as transaction. So overall the story was very interesting, however the writing style was a bit tedious to get through and I really really had to force myself to finish this one. Next up is a book I've been seeing all over booktube and also all of the bookstores and that is Open Water by Caleb Azuma Nelson. It is quite a short book, I think it's under 200 pages. It's 100, 145 pages. This book is set in London and it follows the story of a couple as they meet, fall in love, and how their relationship progresses. It is written in the second person, which is quite shocking if you are not used to reading books in the second person, which I am not, um, and that did take a little bit of getting used to. However, once I got used to it, I really enjoyed it. It felt incredibly intimate, and it made me feel all the emotions that the character was meant to be feeling. This read like a memoir. It was so raw and so beautiful. The author is a photographer and the main character is also a photographer and he falls in love with a woman who is a dancer and they both bond over art, they both bond over what it's like to be black in London, what it's like to come from different worlds but very similar worlds. Somehow the writing is both very lyrical and also straight to the point. Um, I liked that the author included a lot of cultural references to movies, to songs, to photographers, and as a debut novel, this is really incredible. The third book I read this week is a magical realism novel, 
and that is Call Baby by Morgan Jerkins. She is also the author of This Will Be My Undoing, which is a collection of nonfiction essays. However, Call Baby is her first uh, fictional piece. This book is set in New York and it builds on the kind of folklore, supernatural belief of a call, which is when a baby is born in the membrane. Um, this is called the, the call. And in the book, the idea is that when a child is born with the call, they actually grow up with it and it doesn't just fall off. Um, I think it continues to grow with them until they're 21. And so it's like a thin membrane, a thin second skin all over their entire body. And this protects them from everything. And they're also able to cut off pieces of it to sell and if a person has it and wears it it will protect them as well it is about a black family um led by a matriarch living in new york that have sort of witchy vibes there are conversations about being a woman being a black woman um education exposure to the world we have this family who is selling pieces of their body generally to a white population, to a white customer base to protect them, but would turn away people who were unable to afford these incredibly high rates. Um, and these people were often, from their communities, people of color. I'm not sure if it's because it is the author's first time writing a fictional story, but the narrative jumped around a lot. Um, suddenly, with a sentence, it would be eight years forward, um, but nothing had changed. All the characters continued to speak and behave in the same ways. Often the dialogue was very unusual. Um, the conversations didn't really make sense. The characters often spelled things out for the reader to reveal something or to make sure that the reader understood the connection. I also felt that the characters weren't developed enough, whereas the reader we were told that a character was intimidating and foreboding. However, we never actually saw them being that way, so you didn't believe that other people were scared of this character. While I did manage to finish this book, it did take quite a lot of effort on my part because I felt like I knew exactly where the story was going and then the characters were just confirming for me exactly what I knew was about to happen. Those are the three books I read this week. Um, you know, you win some, you lose some. I'm gonna try not to let it get me into a reading slump and hopefully the next book I pick up will be one that is a real page turner and gets me excited about reading again. Let me know if you read any of these books and if your thoughts were different from mine. Thank you so much for watching and see you soon. Bye!